Hey guys, Bread God Gaming here. Hope you're having a good day. I'm going to overview how genetics works in CK3 and show you how you can run a genetics program to create a superhuman family. First, I'll overview what traits we want and how genetics works mechanically. Then I'll show you some examples. There are many different traits a character can have in CK3 located on the character page here, such as our personality traits, our education traits, and etc. The ones we're going to talk about today are specifically labeled congenital traits, meaning they can be inherited by your children. If it's not labeled congenital, then it is not inherited with a few exceptions. Take a look at my son and see how exceptional his stats are, or even some of my dynasty members who are only babies and you can see they have amazing stats. This is what we're going to aim for. The first traits we want to acquire in any genetics program are these three leveled traits. They are called leveled traits because they have three levels to their strength with level 3 being the highest. The first category is intellect, which gives flat stats and lifestyle experience, meaning more perks. Physique, which adds up to 8 years of extra life and enhances your prowess, meaning more time to finish your conquering before death and better nights. And beauty, which improves fertility and attraction opinion. If you're a female ruler, men will have plus 30 opinion of you until you're 45. Once you've obtained these three traits, then this will allow you to use this special decision strength and bloodline, which will juice up your genetics program by giving your entire dynasty the strong blood modifier. This will increase your chance of inheriting good traits by 40% and the chance of appearance of new good traits by 400%. To complete the decision, you need one from each category and one of them has to be one of the level three traits. You also can't have any negative traits. We also want to get enough renown to unlock some dynasty legacy perks. The ones that are most important are in the blood track, Noble veins will give us better chance of inheriting good traits. Convergent blood will help improve those level traits so that they can become level 3. Resilient bloodline will reduce the chance that we inherit bad traits. Architectured ancestry will let us choose a trait to become more common. I usually go for fecund. Bounces loins will help increase fertility, meaning more children. For a successful genetics program, you'll need the biggest family possible. There are also a few more congenital traits we can breed into our bloodline that are not leveled. One of them is fecund, which increases our fertility and the years that we're fertile, and also our life expectancy. And the other one is pure-blooded, which gives us extra health and fertility, and also a reduced inbreeding chance that I'll go over. This trait is the holy grail of a successful successful genetics program and it can take many years and a little bit of luck to get this into your bloodline. There are also some extra traits with special inheritance if you really want to maximize your character that I'll go over later as well. Sometimes your heir is going to be better than you so you might want to force your succession and I'll show you multiple different ways that you can force yourself to play the next character. Eventually when you get to the end of your genetic program you're going to want to create your own religion mainly because you want to be able to marry your siblings and children together in order to take advantage of the pure-blooded trait. And those are the basic steps on how you create a superhuman dynasty. This section will go over the mechanics of genetics. Traits are either classified as active or inactive. An active trait is seen on your character page and gives you actual benefits versus an inactive trait is not visible but can still be inherited. A trait has the following chances to be inherited actively and the following chances to be inherited inactively. So if we have two parents with the trait actively then our child will have an 80% chance to inherit the trait actively as well but if they don't inherit it actively there's a 150% chance to inherit it inactively. The chance here is over 100%, so debuffs cannot reduce the chance below 100%. As you can see, we want both parents to have the active trait for the best inheritance, and if you have either strengthened bloodlines 40% or noble veins 30%, then the chance will be increased up to 100% for two active trait parents. On the flip side, the inactive chances are also why sometimes your child randomly appears with a negative trait. If you check the grandparents, someone probably had an active negative trait and has skipped the generation to plague your child. So despite the small chance, double check the grandparents to make sure there are no negative traits when marrying for a genetics program. The other reason is that person is likely cheating with someone else. In addition, each trait, positive or negative, also has a natural prevalence rate between 0.05 to 0.5% for randomly appearing in your children or in randomly generated characters in the 
world. The 400% and 30% of inheriting new good traits will amplify these values. The following traits are exceptions to the normal inheritance rules and have different inheritance chances than normal. You can see the chance for pure-blooded is actually decreased if there is only one parent with 15% chance instead of the usual 25%. There is also a slightly reduced chance even with two active parents. When we are at the arranged marriage page, the game will only show you the active traits that can be inherited. There are some special rules for the mechanics behind level traits, but basically if we have different level traits, there's an increased chance to inherit either one. So if I have the intelligent trait and my spouse-to-be has the quick trait, then our children will have a higher chance to be either intelligent or quick. If you have the same level trait, like two intelligent traits, then you'll see that the game has this arrow that will remind you that not only will this trait be guaranteed to be inherited, the trait might also intensify or reinforce and upgrade into the next level trait. If both parents have the max level trait already, then there will be a check mark saying that this trait will be inherited. So if you can't marry the highest level trait spouse, at least marry a person with a matching trait to have it leveled. The game will also warn you if your marriage might result in inbreeding, which is marriage between related family members. Inbreeding can lead to the development of certain negative traits that can be passed down even without continued inbreeding. There are also two traits only obtained with inbreeding, inbred and pure-blooded. The more common ancestors you share, the more likely you will get the inbred trait, with the most ancestors shared between full siblings. The pure-blooded trait is a rare trait with a max chance of 2.24% chance to acquire, and it requires at least 20 common ancestors which basically means at least sibling marriages. Because the chance of negative traits is so much higher, it's more practical to wait for someone with the pure-blooded trait to appear and then marry them, or to start off with the trait. Eventually, we will need to have inbreeding. Because we get the blood perks and strengthened blood, most of the genetically superior characters in the world will end up being your dynasty. If you have the pure-blooded trait, it will reduce the chance of inbreeding by 50%, and if both parents are pure-blooded, then it's reduced to 100%, meaning you'll never get any negative traits. Before we get pure-blooded, however, I would recommend keeping inbreeding at most between cousins or uncles, as 14 ancestors is only about 5% chance, which is acceptable. I also have a special note about these negative traits. Melancholic, lunatic, and possessed can be congenital or obtained from random events. The congenital version will have a glowing halo around the trait, and it will also be labeled this trait is congenital. The congenital version of the trait is inherited inactively, but but later on in life, it will become an active trait sometime within these age ranges in this table. So if you get an event to get any of these traits, don't worry, it won't mess up your genetic program. It's impossible to guess if the person has a hidden negative trait, but it's unlikely, and you can just divorce or murder them immediately. That's enough for theory behind genetics. I'm going to play a quick example and give some tips throughout. I'm going to start as the chieftain of Thaumund here, who's a pre-made character. The first thing of any genetics program is that you want to be patient. Breeding the perfect heirs takes time, and starting from pre-made characters can take almost 200 years. We can't have a genetics program without breeding and we're gonna need lots of it. I prefer starting off with the beauty leveled line of traits so my family members will get increased fertility. Since I'll probably be playing my player heir soon, I'm gonna look for a spouse for him first. I can sort for the beautiful trait. You see we and there's two available, so I'm gonna go for the younger one. Let me make sure she doesn't have any parents with negative traits. It looks like she was a spawned character. Then for ourselves, we're also gonna find ourselves a wife. It looks like the other person's also willing. But let's say you don't have any good characters in your find spouse pool. What you can do is if you click the C button on your keyboard, it'll pull up the character finder. You can also click on it through the three dots here in the more section to find character. Once this page is open, we're going to sort for all characters. We're going to look for one side or range. You don't want a ruler. You can change for a child or adult depending how quickly you need to marry. We're going to need a female. We want an unmarried one. We want someone who's free and someone who's heterosexual. The other sexualities will give a fertility penalty. And since we want as big of a family as possible, just make sure the person you're picking is hetero or at least bi. So once that is all sorted, let's look for a trait such as beautiful. And this was the person we saw before, but here is another person. She's currently serving as a spy master at someone else's court. We can right-click her 
and you'll see we can't invite her and we can see if we can arrange a marriage with her. You'll see that she will not accept this. However, the opinion that matters is actually not hers, but the liege of the person. In this case, it's this Furella here. So I could either try to sway him over time or I could try to send gold to increase opinion and eventually he might like me enough to allow our marriage together. If we can't marry the conventional way, there are a few other things we can do. You can seduce her so that she becomes your lover and when you invite a lover there's a big bonus we can go down the intrigue tree to the truth is relative and fabricate a hook on her we can go further down the tree to the kidnapper perk which will allow us to abduct her we can also murder her liege so that she becomes an unemployed woman and we might be able to invite her better. If you have the Royal Court DLC, if you increase the lodging amenity to the max level, you will actually gain plus 50 to your chance to invite every person. This is not a listed benefit, so use this to your advantage. You can increase the range of our accessibility if we double click on the character. We'll see that this person is located over here. To see where your range is, if you go to your council, and click on fabricate claim on county. It'll show you where you can fabricate a claim and this is also your diplomatic range. So we're really far away from where she is. If I wanted to try to get to her, I would need to own some land maybe over here or I might even need some more and maybe own something over here in order to get within range to her. Coming back to our example, let's just marry this lady here. Our chance of children is medium. A female's fertility decreases up to age 45 or 50 with the fecund trait and thereafter they have no fertility versus males are fertile until their death although decreasing over time. On average pregnancies occur at about 2-5% to chance per month with higher chances at younger ages. This chance can be modified by bonuses and penalties. Once you are married you want to always make sure you seduce your spouse so that you start making children as quickly as possible. If you are a lover or soulmate you also get a bonus to your fertility. You can also land your children give them a bonus to fertility. It will also increase the maximum number of children they can have, which is soft capped at nine children for the player, plus two extra for every extra spouse you have. Female rulers can only have a maximum of nine children. Just make sure you have already picked their spouse before you give them land because otherwise they will pick their own spouse. In the early game, most of the renown you get will be from your rank and from how many living members you have. So having a big family is really good. If you have trouble keeping your inheritance or realm intact, you can check out my beginner's guide or my inheritance guide to walk you through some strategies on how to maintain a strong kingdom and how to have pseudo primogeniture which is all for one inheritance once i've increased my rank to king i'm now gaining more renown per month from here on you're gonna want to either reinforce the traits you have to the maximum or to try to add another level trait until you can get the strength and bloodline decision you also have to balance this with being attacked so sometimes you may have to marry for alliance power rather than genetic having a lot of kids helps with this as well because we started with 100 renown i was able to get enough renown within 15 years of game start to unlock Noble Vein's perk. So once my daughter is of age, I'm going to have her married matrilineally, meaning that her children will be part of our dynasty. I'm going to look for someone who is beautiful. He's a little too young. He won't be able to marry until he's 16, which is 11 years of lost fertility. So I'm going to look for someone who is ready to marry. So we check on him. He doesn't have any bad parents. He's also lustful, so he's extra fertile. So our chance of children is very high, so that's good. We also have one more son. Because he's already level 3, I'm going to see if I can have him marry someone else with a different level 3. So we got Herculean over here. Let's see if there's genius. So let's have them marry together. Because I plan to play Ireland, I also adopted elective succession for my primary titles. So I can actually vote for my better genetic son. So he's going to be my new player heir. So now I'm playing as the younger brother who was beautiful and who is betrothed to someone who has the Herculean trait. I have too many titles, so I'm going to grant duchy over here to my nephew. So unfortunately, my son was only born with the beautiful trait from me, but no Herculean trait from my wife. So I'll try to look for a wife with the Herculean trait, which we have. So let's do that. So because I'm in danger of losing too much land, I betrothed my daughter 
who didn't have any good genes anyways to the king of Alba. And after you've seduced your lover, you can also romance them to try another pregnancy event. I have a grandson who's beautiful Herculean, which is pretty good. Let's see if there's a genius for our son. And it looks like you're pretty lucky. Use a grand wedding for the DLC to hopefully improve their fertility together. You always want to make sure you have your family members married, so frequently check the current situation and look into this area here to marry your family members. I just got a notification that I had a great granddaughter and she is born with all three traits, with one of them being a level three. So if I were able to play her, we would be able to strengthen our bloodline. I actually have another granddaughter who also has three traits. So another tip you could do now is you can naturally wait until you get to play her or a son with three traits. Or if you want to try to rush as fast as possible, you can try to force succession. There's many ways to do that. You can attempt suicide here, although this would decrease your level of splendor. So I'd don't recommend doing that as the first thing. A few things you can do are try to give yourself a lot of stress to either die or abdicate or go on a pilgrimage to somewhere really far away and make it as dangerous as possible. You can customize your route so that you can go really far away and you can see for the cost of 125 gold we get 76 chances of high danger. One easy thing to do as well to get stress is you can reset all your perks and this will give you critical stress. Since I was down the hole above Body, I'll actually get rid of it and leave it out. Now my health is poor, meaning I have a chance to die. I even have this notification that I'm dying. Because I'm just, I know if I try to randomly murder people, I'll gain stress. And I can just keep trying to murder and I'll keep gaining stress. So now I'm level 3 stress. Let's see what kind of events I get. I'm able to gain melancholic and it's the non-congenital version because again there is no line saying congenital and it's not glowing. This will make me at the dying stage. And there we go. Within a few months, I was able to switch my succession. So now I'm playing my son. And so either I can go through my son to play this granddaughter, which is beautiful, hale, and quick. But I think I'd rather go through my other daughter, play this granddaughter, who is genius, hale, and pretty. Before I try to move my succession again, let me at least tutor this granddaughter a little bit. We naturally die, and now we're playing our daughter. So I'm just going to wait until she's 16 before I peace out with this ruler as well. This guy is very nice, genius, robust, and handsome. However, he's only a baby, meaning that I'll have to wait another 16 years. Since I don't want to wait too long, I'm still gonna play my daughter. All right, so my daughter is now ready. So I'm going to try to abdicate for her. So let's try a travel technique to try to end our own life. I'm gonna go to Jerusalem over here. Now you want to check your entourage and I don't want my daughter to actually come with me because I don't want her to die. So if I go to the palm, I can select humble to bring no one from my court, only my physician. This way if I perish, it will not be a problem. See if I can add some danger. We're going to visit over here. We got 63 chances to potentially die. All right. And we got lucky. We were able to perish at sea. And so now we are playing our daughter who is genius, hale, and pretty. And the first thing before I do anything, let's go to the decisions. We can strengthen our bloodline. Now all my dynasty gained this strong modifier permanently. And so from here on out, all of the children that will be born into my Dynasty will have a much higher chance having at least these three traits. For myself, I want to try to find someone who has hopefully two traits. We see someone here. The fertility is still pretty high, so I think it's okay to do. From here, now my job is to look for someone with pure blooded if possible. No one in the world has been born yet with pure blooded, so there's not much I could do there. My first son with the second trait. I'm now at nine children, which is the max, so I'll have to romance my husband to try for one more pregnancy event. Looks like finally, 112 years in, someone was born with pure-blooded trait. I really want this son to marry her, so I'm actually going to break this betrothal and go for this. Thankfully, he's also Catholic and he's also in Croatia, which is within range. So now I'll be able to potentially have children with the pure-blooded trait. So once this romance is finished, you can see it says I lay with the High King. I spent the next two decades conquering lands to form the Empire of Britannia. I also was blessed with the 
grandson who got the pure-blooded trait and also three traits. So I made some moves to force my succession. And just a few months into our pilgrimage to Narnia, I was able to die. And for my next ruler, I went down to get the kidnapper perk and I abducted some people with pure-blooded so that I could add them into my breeding program. Just note that you can't recruit a person until they turn 16. After capturing and breeding, I was ready to go to my next ruler. And my current ruler has almost perfect traits and my wife as well is almost perfect. Just four years later, I received the perfect heir. Looking at my dynasty, we can see I have multiple children with good traits. The last thing to do is making a custom faith. With my victory over Rome and going on a ton of pilgrimages to become a religious icon, I can finally mend the schism. Before I do that, I can create my own custom religion. We want to make unrestricted marriage. Divorce is always allowed. We want polygamy. I personally like equal. We're going to go for divine marriage. Another strong tenet I like is astrology. I'm going to make adultery accepted, make cleric revocable so I could appoint a stronger cleric. I'll allow marriage. Troll is good. I make these criminal just so we have reasons to imprison vassals through random events. And everything else is pretty good, so we'll create our new faith and mend the great schism. So now we proclaim that Bromasian is the one and only church. And you can see most places with Christian faiths have now converted. I have a super marriage. I'm going to have him marry only pure-blooded persons. First, he can marry my eldest daughter who's perfect. I'm going to give her a title. Let's give her Rome since she's the most perfect. She can now have additional spouses. I'm going to have her marry my other sons. Because both characters are pure-blooded, there is no chance in inbreeding. So from here on out, we're going to only have genetically superior children. I can also consecrate my bloodline as a paragon. Now all of my descendants will also have consecrated blood. So this is the end of the example run. Our next heir is going to be the perfect genetic superhuman. And because of inbreeding with her pure-blooded brothers, she's going to continue producing amazing heirs. And so to recap the method, so starting out in the beginning, you want to marry spouses with good genetic traits, and then hopefully you'll have children who inherit the traits, and you continue marrying spouses with good genetic traits and having lots of children. And slowly over time, you'll be able to get to a ruler with multiple traits. It took us around 100 years to strengthen our bloodline by having her have three of the level traits. You can see we forced her mother to kick the bucket early in order to quickly play her. And once we had her, we again continued having multiple children until we can slowly breed into having pure-blooded. And now we're at the point where we have very high level traits. And the last step is to create your own religion for unrestricted marriage so that your heir can marry their siblings who also have good traits and pure-blooded. Thanks for making it this far, and if you like the content so far, please consider subscribing and liking the video. If you have questions or comments, feel free to comment below and I'll be happy to answer. This section will have some custom builds if you're not using a pre-made character. The goal of these builds is to enable you to have a genetic program earlier. So let's go and create a custom ruler. I like to start off with males because of the fertility males get to be infertile for longer than females. I personally like to start off either as a baby or as a 70 year old for the most amount of perk points. A 15 year old is also not too bad if you don't want to play a baby. The advantage here is that instead of spending points on education trait, you can immediately educate yourself and there's a chance you might get a higher trait than if you were to spend points here. I will start off with my baby build. So the traits that we want are at least one of each level trait. We'll see that the beauty traits comely, handsome, and beautiful are worth 40 per tier. The intellect trait is 80 per tier, so it's the most expensive. And in the middle is the physique at 60 per tier. I think it's too expensive to start off with genius as the level 3, so I would either go for a beautiful or Herculean. Usually I use Herculean just so my ruler can live as long as possible, but if he needs some extra points, he can use beautiful. So for this example, I will use Herculean. I will pick quick and comely. This way I can strengthen my bloodline immediately. As we mentioned earlier in the video, pure-blooded is hard to get, so it can be nice to invest in this. It also gives you a little bit more health. From here on out, you can do whatever you want with the skills and stats. I personally like longer living rulers, so usually I go for fecund. And by lowering the points, we are now at a nice 400. I personally also add flagellant, and then I also add witch, because I like to get witch coven. Irritable is also nice because 
It's a great way to relieve stress and it costs zero. If you don't want to be a baby, then you can be a 70 year old and that would also be 400 points. You might think you will die immediately, but you're actually born with enough health to last 30 years at least. The other advantage of being a 70 year old is that you also come with 18 perk points. And if you check your health, it's in good. The perk points you would get is dependent on which education trait you picked. So since I had it on Intrigue, you'll see I have 18 perk points already ready for me. I don't need to go into the Intrigue tree. I can always go for something else like Medicine and then come back and fill out whatever I need here. Again, the advantage here is that we can strengthen Bloodline immediately and now we can kickstart our genetic breeding pool. If you want an even crazier build, I've set his age to 37 so I can have some kids. For every year above 16, you can have a son or daughter and they will be be at least your age minus 16 so my oldest child will be 21. I've also given him most of the negative traits but none that are congenital including negative personality traits that are minus 10 and will also give more customization points. You can see the breakdown over here if needed. The advantage of this is that you get at least one son who's your heir and you get 19 daughters who can now kickstart your breeding program. So your children might inherit your traits as if they were just born. So if you check out our son, you'll see that he's handsome. If we take a look at our other family, you can see some daughters have gotten pure blooded. Some of them got multiple traits. The reason why I picked the learning tree is that I can go in here and I have seven perk points. We have just enough perk points that we can go down into know thyself. This will actually guarantee one year of life at least. And now you just marry everyone matrilineally with anyone who has inheritable traits. You likely won't have enough marriage partners with inheritable traits, so you'll just have to have your family marry people who don't have traits. These special traits have special inheritance rules, unlike congenital traits which are purely inherited by marriage. I've included them here simply for completion since most are out of the way in a typical run. These four are called descendant traits and a character who takes the corresponding decision will gain the founding trait and their descendants will gain a weaker version of a descendant trait. This trait is always inherited and it's cool because later when you come across a random character, even if their dynasty is different, if they have the descendant trait, it means that you can trace this person's lineage back to your founding character. The Saoxian's biggest requirements are that you control the empire of Persia completely and you are Zoroastrian religion. You can change your religion afterwards and you won't lose the trait. The Paragon or Savior trait's biggest requirements are that you are a religious icon and only one person per religion can consecrate their bloodline. So one for Catholicism, one for Orthodoxy, etc. If you create a custom religion, it counts as part of whatever the parent religion was. So if you were Catholic, then made your own religion, but a Catholic takes the decision before you do, you can no longer take it and will have to convert to something else. Make sure you consecrate your bloodline before becoming Shaoshant, otherwise you can't do it afterwards. Certain Muslim characters in the world start out with the Sayyid trait, and to get this into your bloodline, you have to marry the male characters. This is because it has an extra rule where children will only inherit this trait if the father is the one with it. So if you want to continue playing with a trait, you have to only play male heirs or marry male spouses with the trait. Augustus is a trait that is bestowed to the holder of the Roman Empire title, which you can form with the Restore the Roman Empire decision. Born in the Purple is given to children who are born to Byzantine or Roman Empire title holders who also hold Constantinople. You can hold the title or your spouse can hold the title. There are also special circumstances for the mother that need to be met. The title holder needs to have Byzantine traditions in their culture. One of the most common questions is why a newborn baby became your heir instead of your older child. Children with born in the purple precede those without the trait in terms of inheritance. Your older child didn't get the trait because you didn't have the title at the time or one of the shenanigans with the mother. Usually it's because you became emperor and then had another baby. And that's everything I have to say about genetics. I hope you learned something from this video and if this video has helped you please consider subscribing and liking this video. It helps me tremendously so thank you so much. You can check out my channel for other guides and leave a comment if you have any questions or want to see a specific topic discussed. Thanks again from Bread God and have a good day.